What if you don't throw 99 like Trevor May or hit 500 foot home runs like Otani? Can you still get the same perks that Trevor May outlined in his video if you're an absolute scrub at baseball? Yeah, mostly. I don't play baseball and I get most of the same perks that Trevor May does. My name is Randall and I do advanced scouting and replay for the Rays. And I just wanted to add nine points to Trevor May's video from a staff member's point of view. I also want to share a couple negatives that come with this job that people mostly oversee due to the facade of this baseball lifestyle. The first three I want to share is food, hotels, and flights. I think he definitely undersold these first three. As someone who grew up playing travel ball, staying in some holiday inns, eating Jimmy John's all the time, and flying southwest where your knees are in the back of the pasture in front of you, these perks are unbelievable. I don't know, I'll, I'll just like walk into our food room after a game and our chef E will just have know, filet mignon and lobster just casually. It's like, what? And for the flies, everyone has like their own like lazy boy chair. But not only is the seat comfortable, I have enough room in my little seat to have my backpack and still have leg room so I could just extend my feet out. Now, funny enough, like the one part that is actually better for staff members and players, all our tickets are actually free as opposed to players that get it taken out of their salary. Now, since I started working for the Rays, everyone just wants to be our friend now because I get free tickets. So my friends essentially doubled to uh, like, Eight, so no big deal. Now, fourth thing that Trevor May obviously didn't talk about, you get to meet and get to know all these players on the team. Like I remember the first day of spring training, I was just walking by the food room and I just see KK just eating breakfast kind of like, wow. That's Kevin Kiermaier right there. And on top of that, I don't know if this is just the race or whatever, but all the players are extremely nice to say hi to me, ask how I'm doing stuff. And I know that may seem small, but as someone who never played professionally, is a young person in the clubhouse, like the default is probably just to ignore me. And just the fact that they take the time out of their day to acknowledge me, it means a lot to me. And so for that, I'm very appreciative. Fifth thing. You get so much gear. Like, let, let me remind you, I am not a player. I'm just a low-level staff member. But I essentially get all the yearly gear that all the players get. I get a pair of pants, hoodies, jackets, shirts, long sleeve shirts, wet shirts, all the hats for every single special van. I get all of them. I actually didn't take home some of my hats. These are all the hats I got for one year. And I probably wore 90% of these one time. This is the one we got when we clinched. Still smells like alcohol. Game hat, Jackie Robbins, train training, post season, 9-11, post season, July 4th, Father's Day. Uh, I get just kind of a lot. But yeah, like our head club, ET wall, he just hooks us up all the time. But that's why we tip them because if they treat us nice, we want to treat them nice as well. All right, six. And this is probably the most undervalued perk, but probably my favorite. When we fly, we get to park on the tarmac. I just drive up to the airport, onto the tarmac, park my car, and just walk straight onto the airplane. Oh, and they usually have to Chick-fil-A or something. It is so nice. That is the most big league thing, I think, that we have. And it never gets old. I don't deserve this, but this is sick. Seven. I get to work out on the fields whenever I want. Now, even though I lift, I don't use the team gyms. I don't use the training room. I don't use, I, I stay away from that. But most of the team staff, they go to the field early. I would do some work on the field, stretch out, run around the field. And that is amazing. But then you get hurt and get plantar fasciitis and then you're never out there again. But yeah, that doesn't matter. Number eight, from a staff member's point of view, is that I get to shag and catch up on defense whenever we have on field. So I remember my first spring training, they asked me to catch up at second or do an infield work. So I was just at second. I haven't caught a ball in like three years. No big deal, whatever. And Yandy Diaz is at third, Wander Franco is at short, b is at second, and G Min Choi is at first. And you probably think, wow, I that is sick. No, that is not what I was thinking. I was thinking, don't drop the ball, don't let it hit your face, don't embarrass yourself. I was so nervous. Like I played D1 baseball. Like I turned plenty of double plays. They throw the ball firm compared to D1. I remember the first ball Yanni Diaz threw to me. He, he literally looked like this. And it came into me like this. I was like, what the? F like, I guess every guy in the big leagues just casually throws like 86 across the diamond. But just being out on the field catching up these guys that make millions of dollars is like, and also shagging whenever we take BP on the field before the games. And it's sick, don't get me wrong, but it does get kind of annoying when fans are just ripping on you the whole time because you're not throwing them every single ball to them specifically. I would love to make your day, but I also can't just throw all our balls away. If you want a tip and you go to a raise game and you want a ball, Go find Randy Rosarena, because he'll find every single ball out on the field and throw them to the fans. So that would be a good guy to go to. Ninth and last of the good ones is laundry. Now, I hate laundry. And if you play college ball, maybe even high school, you have these loops. You get all your clothes, put them on the loops, and then the equipment managers wash them for the night. You get to your locker the next day, your loops in your locker. They're usually all wrinkly, whatever, that's normal. First day at spring training, I get to my locker. I'm like, where's my loop? Like, what's going on? And I look at my locker and it's already hung up. All the short sleeves are together. All the long sleeves are together. Even my socks are hung up. Like, I don't deserve this. What? Honestly, just like little things like that. All the players, all the staff, and everyone's just super appreciative of the clubbies. Now, I'm not gonna lie, like, these experiences are unbelievable and it's more than I could have ever imagined, but it does come at 
pretty big costs. For example, the first thing, your job is essentially your life. When you're on the travel staff, your schedule is on team tape. So games pretty much every single day. And even on off days, we have to produce all this work for each series. So we're working on an off days. So for nine months, we have no personal life. For example, my typical schedule is wake up at 10 a.m., try to get a lift in, go to the field, do work until game time, do replay during the game, eat dinner, get home around like 11, 11.30, and then work for a couple hours, get to bed at like 10, and then do it all over the next day. But yeah, the hours are tough, but like I said, you just don't have a life. My family, my girlfriend's back in California, barely ever get to see them. You don't have weekends, don't have friends, because you can never see them. Like last year, I had three weddings, missed all of them. Didn't even ask to go, because it would be foolish for me to even ask. That's just the way this job is, and that's fine. I knew that going into it. That is something that you have to take into account for a job like this. Secondly, like there's just no consistency at all. Like having a normal nine to five sounds nice. For this job, you can have a game at seven, and then a game at 12, and then a game at four, and your schedule is different all three days. I remember my first road trip, we played at Wrigley, a night game during the weekday, which made no sense, but whatever, I digress. We had a rain delay, didn't even finish it, flew back to Tampa. We actually went to a different airport because the one we were supposed to go to was closed, then took a bus from that one airport to the other airport to pick up all our cars, and then drove back home. By the time I showered and got into bed, it was about five o'clock, and I had to wake up early the next morning to prepare for the next series. So yeah, it's hard, like sleep's never consistent, schedule's never consistent, but hey, other experiences, they're pretty dope, right? Now, there's other things that affect me physically and mentally, and I'm not here to complain or vent. I'm more so saying this because me, personally growing up if i didn't play professional baseball i wanted to work in baseball and i didn't even take the shot right out of college after college i worked a couple years in new york city enjoyed that life enjoyed having an income but i was very fortunate enough with good timing network a lot of things just line where i had this opportunity to take this job and yeah going into this dom baseball everything i ever wanted everything i ever thought no matter what i want to take it but the grass is not always greener on the other side like of course there's positives and negatives to everything if you have aspirations for a job like this go for it although there may be shortcomings you don't want to be 40 years old and be like damn i wish i try to work in baseball or i try to work in sports and i want to make this video because yes there are positives but there are also some very severe negatives to go with it too but with any opportunity in life i think you need to acknowledge both sides of the equation and honestly just do whatever you want learn about yourself know where your value is and if you know yourself well enough you can get whatever you want in life